this required practical video for biology, all about photosynthesis. Um, we've had our plants under the light here, so they should be photosynthesizing nicely, ready for us to start the experiment. I'm going to talk you through each of the steps, but this is really a very simple experiment to do. So, to begin with, the first thing I'm going to do is cut my plant to a 10 centimetre length. Now, I'm going to cut at a slight angle, so that we've got a nice point on the end of our plant, and that will mean, that hopefully, the bubbles will all come from that one sharp point, and they'll be easier to count. Be very careful with the scalpels. Obviously, they're very, very sharp, and we don't want any accidents. Now I've got my 10 centimetre length of plant. I'm going to put it into our hydrogen carbonate solution. This is going to provide some extra carbon dioxide and mean that that is not going to be one of the limiting factors in this experiment. I'm going to make sure my plant goes in upside down. I'm just going to clear up a couple of those spare leaves there so I've got a nice sharp point on it. And just in case you have difficulty getting it all the way to the bottom, you can have a glass rod handy to help poke it down, but that's gone in quite nicely. So now I'm going to stand it in my um, boiling tube rack and I'm going to move it over here next to my meter ruler. Now we're going to take several measurements today. I'm just going to move a couple of these things out of the way. Now I recommend that you have your lamp lying down on its side because that means you get the closest possible value to your, to your zero line there. And also it, it shines nicely on your, your plant giving it the best amount of light. Now you've got to leave it to acclimatise for about five minutes before you take any counts of the number of bubbles. So we're going to leave it for five minutes and we'll be back in a moment. Okay, we've waited our five minutes and now we're going to be able to start our timer and see how many bubbles we get in a one minute time period. Now you need to look right at the tip of the cut part of the plant and that is where the bubbles are going to start coming out. So there was one. Now, depending on how active your plant is and how well it's photosynthesizing, you may get a very small number of bubbles like we are getting at the moment, or sometimes you get a fairly steady stream of bubbles. Now that can make it a lot more difficult to count, so you're just going to have to do the best you possibly can, um, but that is one of the inaccuracies of this experiment. So there you go, you can see hopefully that we're getting a few bubbles coming out there. Now rather than sit here and show you the entire experiment which will take a very long time i'm just going to talk you through the stages that will be coming next so you can see that right now we are getting a fair few bubbles coming up after you've counted that minute you're going to move your plant further away to your next distance but instead of starting counting again straight away you need to leave the plant to acclimatize to this new level of light because it's going to take a little while where the amount of light from being so close is still having an impact on how many bubbles are produced. So you need to leave it for five minutes to acclimatise to this new level of light before you take any new readings. Then, once again, you move it further away, leave it to acclimatise, and then take the next set of readings. So, it's as simple as that. That's the photosynthesis experiment. Final part of this then, let's talk about some of the inaccuracies that can take place as part of this experiment, and some of the control variables you need to think about when you're doing it. So we'll start with the control variables. Um, you need to make sure that your lamp is giving off the same amount of light each time. Therefore, you should be using the same wattage of bulb and the same type of bulb. So make sure you mention that. Uh, pick it a, a, a wattage, let's say maybe 40 watts, and say you will always use the same 40 watt bulb. Another inaccuracy could be to do with the concentration of your hydrogen carbonate solution. So I think R1 is 0.2%. So make sure you quote a value for that as well so that your um, amount of carbon dioxide availability is also constant for each experiment. The size of your plant should be the same to make sure that you don't end up with different sizes of plant photosynthesizing different amounts. And also the amount of light, um, sorry, the colour of light. If you're doing certain other experiments in photosynthesis, you can change the filters, so the wavelength of light that the plant receives, that should all remain exactly the same. So we're not using any filters at all. Now, one potential difficulty in this experiment is trying to keep the temperature the same. That should be another control variable, but a lot of these lamps will give off a lot of heat and that can warm up your water. So potentially, to try and avoid that, you could have some kind of um, water barrier in the way so that a, um, a thin glass tank of water would absorb a lot of that heat, meaning that your plant would not warm up and it would not impact your results. Lastly, talking about health and safety, we've obviously spoken about the scalpel being very sharp, that's one thing you need to, to consider. Also, if you're using um, pondweed, 
There are plenty of bacteria and things that can be in that pond water. You need to make sure you wash your hands carefully and obviously under no circumstances eat or drink around any of these or eat or drink without washing your hands at the end of the experiment. Uh, otherwise, that's it for this experiment. Bye-bye.